I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today I show you all the tips and tricks that you're gonna need to get through the entirety of Batania. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now, jumping back into some more All The Mods 9, today I want to get into Batania. That's right, the magic of all magic mods. Or is it? Because to me, personally, it feels really like a tech mod. But we'll get into more of that later on, as one of the first things we need to do is, well, start automating things. So what exactly is Batania going to be used for in this pack? Well, it is going to be used for the All the Mod Star, but we have to beat the Gaia Guardian, which is the in-game boss that Batania offers. Outside of that, there's really no other items that are going to be super necessary. However, I don't want to disregard the usefulness of Batania, because it does have some really nice use cases such as being able to transform certain items from one type to another, very much like Project E can do, but it can also duplicate items, so long as you're giving it a sufficient mana. So with that, my goal today is to take on the Guy Guardian. This is going to require a lot of steps and is going to really seem like a fast-forwarded process of getting through Batania, but I'm going to try my best to explain every individual part that you need to know in order to succeed and get through this mod. Now, the first thing that we need to know how to make is more of these mystical flowers, and we should be able to, at this point throughout, we should be able to make tons, and I mean tons of flowers, if we have mystical flower essence, but how do we get mystical flowers in the first place? Now, that is going to actually come from the floral fertilizer. And to be honest, we are not going to need a ton of flowers. So even setting up the mystical flower is not necessary because we can just use bone meal from our mob farm. So if you have plenty of bone meal, this is going to be super, super easy for you. So we just need to turn this into white dye, all of our bone that we've been producing and just make a bunch of these like mine as well. So we can just make a ton of them like this and then we can combine that bone meal just like this with four dye, and we have tons and tons of this floral fertilizer that we can then just start placing all on the ground. And we can fill this entire area up with tons and tons. But I'm going to go ahead and break all of this, right, and collect it all. But something to note is you can duplicate the petals. So if you actually wanted to set up the traditional automation for this, you most certainly can. All you have to do is convert this into a petal and then place the petal down on the ground and you're gonna notice a little bit of sparkly particle effects. And then with that, you just simply bone mill it. And now all we have to do in this version is just punch it. And we'll get a tall version and that will convert into four. So essentially, we just took one petal and turned it into three more petals. Now, believe me when I say these petals are gonna be insanely important as this is how we're going to make tons of the functional and generational flora that we're going to need in order to progress this mod and also make our apothecary, which is one of the first things we need to make. So now that I have all the petals I could ever want, we need to start using this to just generate flowers. And I wanna make this as easy as possible because this petal apothecary can be quite tedious because you need to place in uh, water and then you need to craft your item and so on and so forth. So to do this, it can be quite rough, but we have our Empress Chalice, right? And that will fill this up, but can we automate this process? I actually think we can. Um, so, in order to do this, we're going to use an activator module with modular routers. Yet again, the, the, the amazing mod is showing up, and I can place this just right underneath. Now, inside the buffer is where we're going to put our Emperor's Chalice, and on our activator module, we want it to say right-click, which is by default, right-click up. And that's all we have to do, and that should automate this. So, right now, we see that it does have this here, but if I go ahead and place it again, notice it just filled right back up again. This is going to make crafting seeds a lot faster. Oh yeah, and speaking of seeds, you're going to need a lot of them. So, make sure you have a nice supply of wheat seeds. Now, the first thing we actually need to craft in this is called the Pure Daisy. And uh, there's something actually missing. I, I, You know what? I should turn this back on. Let's do this. Let's go to Option, Skins, and I'll turn my cape back on. There it is. There it is. This flower that's on top of my head. This is actually a supporter perk for supporting Vasky, who does make this mod. And this flower right here is actually the one that we're about to make. And so to be able to make this, it is just going to be four, uh, four white petals and a seed. So this is our first craft and we can right click or we can drop these in just like this. You are going to physically drop them into the world like that. And then you just simply drop in the seeds. And there we go. 
we have a pure daisy. Now to automate this, notice it says right here, it says right click with an empty hand to add back the last recipe. And so I would just right click and then I would place the seed, right? But what we can do is we can just go ahead and toss the seeds on top and then just right click. And so long as we don't have a magnet on that's pulling the seeds, right? That's where having this autofill can allow you to make things a lot faster. Now this is going to lead into one of our first automations and that is just automating a pure daisy. Now I didn't need four of them uh, because I can get away with just using one and I'm gonna show you all we need is stone. So we just need some stone blocks and also some logs of any type. Thankfully we have essence that makes this pretty straightforward. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place like this material around. Now you can place one single type but give this a little bit of time, AKA like two minutes, or you can accelerate it if you have a time in the bottle. And this will convert these logs into their living variant. Uh, so at this point, you see it just happened right there. I want to automate this with refined storage. So to do this, we are going to need to use some interesting uh, like me mechanics that is not used a whole lot in refined storage. So refined storage has an annihilation plane and it also has a constructor, or a deconstructor, I'm thinking Annihilation Plane, that's, that's Applied Energy Sticks, is a, de a, a, a destructor and it also has a constructor. Both of these things are pretty useful and I'm gonna show you how to use them. Now making this particular setup look good, well, that's just going to have to be a thing that we disregard for right now because these planes and the way that we're gonna be setting this up isn't the best looking thing in the world. Uh, let me go ahead and show you though. So down here I have my cables and then we have our planes or I guess you can call them the de deconstructor and constructor. And what we're gonna want is we're gonna have to, to tell these few things, what to place and then what to break. That's pretty much it. That's uh, that's pretty straightforward. Now the, the uh, destructor, this is going to break the things. So I'm gonna place those last and then we have the constructor. This is going to place the block. So let's go ahead and place down some constructors and then we'll tell it exactly what to place. That seems pretty straightforward. So inside this filter, we're gonna want to uh, place the item that we want it to construct. In this case, it's going to be logs. And so it is going to go ahead and place logs. Now, something to keep in mind, if we are placing logs in here, we're probably gonna need a crafting card. Just in case we run out of logs, it'll go ahead and automatically craft them for this place. Now this can be used for a ton of things. So anything you can come up with ideas for, for constructing or placing blocks into the world, this can do it. Now the other side, well, that's gonna be stone. Now up top here, this is gonna be super simple. We're just going to have a, a, the uh, destructor uh, basically tear these blocks down. But without plugging it in, uh, if I was to plug it in right now, it would just break these because there's no filter set. But what I need to do is set it to whitelist mode. And then we need to tell it to break these very specific items. Notice I'm going to go ahead and break these things right here. Uh, and it's placing down the stone. But what we need to tell it is we need to tell it, hey, only break underneath the whitelist mode, these logs, just like that. And same for the living stone. Now, believe me, once you have this in place, you are going to enjoy it. It is going to make things so much better for you. Also, we need to make sure this is set as you see right here. There we go. Once you have this in place, things are pretty much golden from here. Uh, we will be automatically generating all of these resources and this is going to be necessary or getting in further through this mod. Now, something to note at this point, Batania is huge. It may not seem like a whole lot, but this mod has tons and tons of things to learn, right? It just has a lot. So if you're looking for more than what I'm just spouting out today, right? You can check out by just searching in YouTube, you can straight up say Chosen Architect and Batania. And I have tons and tons of videos that I've made over the years and where I've explained how all the mechanics for the most part work, even add-on mods for this. And well, nothing has really changed with Batania, so they're all still relevant today. So now with that being produced over there, we have our stone and our wood, we can start to produce the mana. And yes, mana is actually quite easy to get, um, especially in this pack. All we need is some coal, some sort of fuel source that's burnable, even logs technically, if you have a tree farm, could work with this. And we're gonna be using Endoflames for the start to produce our base set of mana. And so let me show you one of the most simple ways that you can actually automate this. All you're gonna to wanna to do for this is find a center point and then go out one, two, three, and go ahead and place down holes, three blocks in, in the corners away from where you're going to have a central 
sort of uh, mana area. Then you're gonna wanna just place down some barrels, just like this. So I wanna place a barrel down just like so, and there we go, we're good to go. Next thing we need to do is place down some exporters, but this is where things get a little bit more fancy. We are gonna need crafting cards on all of these, and we are going to be sending to this coal blocks, specifically coal blocks because they last a lot longer. And so if we do coal, blocks, we can just drag coal blocks directly in. And because we have coal um, automated with mystical agriculture, it should be able to just create that once we have the recipe set up in refined storage. Once everything's hooked in, we now have blocks of coal going into a barrel and that's pretty straightforward, right? The next part is where it gets insanely easy. Normally you would set up some sort of redstone contraption or even use modular routers for this, but there's no need because we have the create mod, so long as we are using regular funnels, right? We can just use regular andesite funnels and these should be able to automatically send up uh, once we have it configured, right? So if you just right click this on here, it's gonna automatically put one up only ever at a time. That's just how they work. It's gonna send this up and then whenever something takes it, it's going to try to send another item. So it's supposed to, right? So. Um, if it has the item to send, for example, this one will, notice it just sent one up, and it's going to keep sending them up, just like that, only one at a time, for it to be consumed by what we're going to set up, which is Indo Flames. Man, I gotta tell you, the more I learn about Create, just the more I absolutely fall in love with that mod. It, it's, it's just beautiful. Now, starting out, you typically wouldn't have Mana Steel, but because we looted a bunch, we do have Mana Steel. But if you didn't, you could go ahead and just set up one Mana Pool, and then start to fill that Mana Pool with Mana Spreaders which is what we're producing right now. I'm gonna be setting up eight of these, um, getting started, but right here we have a splitter. This is where I'm gonna place it in the center, and then I'm gonna place the mana pools for like this. This will allow us to build up mana and split it between four mana pools, uh, which is gonna be necessary because later on, we're gonna be using about a half of a mana pool just to do one single craft. So now let's go ahead and get our mana spreader set up. And I typically like to use the Petal Apothecaries. These are actually kind of nice decorational pieces. And I'm gonna place them around like this. And then we're gonna place, place the uh, the spreaders right on top of them. Um, and that should look pretty nice. I think this is going to be a, a rather nice setup. So once we have these placed, we can just place these directly on top. And whenever they're turned and stuff, they actually look and fit on here quite nice. Then to turn them, we simply need to make ourselves a wand and you can change the color of them however you want, like so. Uh, but yes, we need to send these by shift right clicking on them and then shift right clicking onto the source we want. Just holding down shift while right clicking will get these set to the position that we want them in. So now we get to put our petal apothecary to use. And to do this, we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves some endo flames. Uh, now the recipe for this is red, gray and two brown, and then we just give the seeds. And this is where the automation is going to come into play. So we need an empty spot in our inventory, make sure our magnet is turned off, which it is, and then I'll just toss the seeds on, and then with my empty hand, I can go ahead and start crafting this by simply right clicking. As soon as it fills up, we can just craft. And this makes it so simple, like even to the point where I could technically, I guess, uh, hold down right click, but there we go. Uh, we just have to have the seeds on here. And every time I see it fill with water, it just makes it so I don't have to use a bucket every time. Now I definitely made a little bit of an extra amount of Indo flames because I think we only need like six per spreader at this low rate. Um, and so in reality, you probably get away with like 48 of them uh, because that's how many we would need. But for right now, let's go ahead and get six put down per. Uh, now to do this, we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six. That should be fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth, right? And the cool part is, is these should automatically link to the nearest spreader. Um, so that we shouldn't have to worry too much about its positioning. And these will all pull directly from this funnel and should consume that charcoal block, which is, uh, definitely gonna be nice and there they go they are all starting to work and we're now starting to get some mana and this is going to produce quite a bit of mana early on 
Uh, definitely until we can get cakes automated and start to use a Kekamoris. Now, something to note, you don't have to use coal or charcoal or anything like that if you don't want to. You can just use any burnable thing, and that also includes blaze rods. Blaze rods would work fantastic here if you just had a mob farm, and that would mean passive mana generation simply from your blaze farm. Now, I know why this is building up. I want to talk about a couple of other mods that are in here that would be really cool to get into, potentially made maybe later on, or if you use applied energistics at the start. And that is the applied botanistics. <laughs> so you can actually use this. And there's also the II Patania, which makes uh, some of the tools have um, like the, the multi-use tools. Uh, but yes, you can actually store mana from this mod in cells and you could teleport your mana around a whole lot easier than it is to do by default. Because by default, transporting mana is kind of a pain. One of the best ways is by using uh, rail carts. Uh, but aside from that, it is quite a pain without having like massive chains of these spreaders everywhere and they don't move them very fast. Now, at this point, we get into one of my least favorite parts of Batania, and that is the rune crafting process. Now, automating it isn't too difficult to do, uh, but in our, our case, we're not going to really need to automate it. We just need to make the first few runes that are required for our progression in order for us to get the agglomeration plate, which is how we're going to make our tear seal. Once we have Terra Steel and we get a certain amount of it, I don't know how much we need. Uh, how much Terra Steel do we need to make these seeds? So we only need four Terra Steel, which is the equivalent of two full mana pools. And then we can make a Terra Steel seed and then we'll have pretty much infinite Terra Steel, which is the how we're going to be actually able to summon in the boss in the first place. So the, getting the seed is going to be necessary. But so that, that just kind of puts in the to the point that we just really need to do the base crafts of the rune. It would be interesting if the pack did require more rune crafting, then there'd be a need to automate this. And I think the automation process of the runic altar is actually more fun than going and fighting the boss. Now, I will go ahead and show you one of the simplest ways to actually get the items required to put in this altar. If you're if you're using refined storage, that is, because I don't know if this absolutely I don't know if this works with with applied energistics, but with refined storage. What you can do is you can simply click on the rune and you can just make sure you have these items. For example, we're going to need redstone, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and convert some of this with some redstone. Um, so we'll make some of the powder. Just make sure you have the items first and foremost. Uh, but yes, you can use this in refined storage and rune to go ahead and, and pull the items out. So you need a fishing rod. Go ahead and make a fishing rod, so on and so forth. And you can click this and notice it just pulls the items right out. But if you're standing on top of this, I believe that if you have this, you can just click the items right onto this by hitting control Q. And there you go. You're ready to go. Now we do need a spreader uh, in order to send mana to this. Um, or what I typically like to do is I just take this spreader and link it here and this spreader and link it here. And then that will be enough to get this started temporarily. But notice, look at this, it's filling up. So that is probably one of the fastest ways to actually craft these items. And then when you're ready, you just right click this on top and then you click it with the wand once. So we toss it and right click with the wand. And there we go, we have runes. So let's go Batania and then rune. And then we can do this again. Let's do it for the fire rune. This is really nice. So make sure you're looking on here, open up your inventory, pull the items in and then control Q them into the altar. Probably the easiest method to do this manually, that is. So it is now agglomeration time. This is the plate that allows us to make Terra Steel. Um, and so we are going to use it for that. It does require a little bit of a multi-block setup to get started and our first introdu introduction in how to actually move uh, mana around. Um, so making it is not just as simple as just making it. As we, like I said, we do have to make sort of a multi-block. Uh, but that's actually pretty easy as well. We are going to need a little bit of living rock and four lapis in order to do this. So let's go ahead and place it right here. Might as well. Um, I'm going to use my atomic disassembler, which is so good at breaking through like every other thing. It's just a nice, it's just such a nice tool. Uh, but we're going to place it just like this with the lapis blocks right here. And then in the middle, even though you can't see it on the diagram, if you were using the Batania book, you can place that right there, and then the agglomeration plate on the top. Now, to make this really, really work, we're going to need to get into sparks. That's our first introduction into a spark. Um, we are going to need a little bit of blaze, just like that. But 
two sparks is what we need. Well, we can actually use more than two sparks. Um, if we go ahead and place a spark on each one of our pulls here, we should be able to make this a little bit faster and it'll also distribute all of our stuff. And what do I mean by placing on pulls? Well, first let's go ahead and place a spark here. And we can actually see that spark barely, but we can see it placed right above this plate. Uh, and then we can also place one right here, right here, right here, and right here. Also, what is this effect? <laughs> what is that? I've never seen that before. Am I being shot with mana? That's the... I, I've never seen that before. That must be something kind of new. I have no idea. But... Now that we have the sparks there, it will pull, whenever we craft something, it's going to pull from those sparks. Now this does have a range, um, and I think it's under 16 blocks. It's not very far, actually, the default range on how it connects. But to see what it's connected to, we can right click on this. And uh, if we click and jump, we can see that it's connected to all of them, or fly, right? And that is pretty cool, just by right clicking, we can see everything going on here. Um, now. You can also build networks with these. Uh, you can change the colors and all kinds of interesting stuff. But the main thing I need to do is I need to get diamonds. We also need ourselves some iron. And we also need some ender pearls. Um, now, I do already have the converted ender pearls. But these are the three items we're going to use to make Terra Steel. And we need to essentially drop these in, right? And if we're going to be making four Terra Steel, which I don't know if we have enough just yet... We're going to need four of each of these materials, at least. And it's kind of crazy that we're already getting into making Terra Steel. But yes, we should be able to make our first Terra Steel by placing these items or right-clicking these items onto this platform. And just like that, it is going to produce Terra Steel. Yes, you just need to make sure that you have at least a half a mana pool worth. And there we go. Our first introduction into one of Britannia's most powerful ingredients. Now, I actually think we have plenty to be able to make all four that we need to make the seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all four crafted. That's actually pretty cool that we already have it with this small setup. And just like this, this is our fourth one. Perfect. So now we can take this and let's go make ourselves a Terra Still seed. So perfect. Now, ignoring the frame rate here. Oh goodness, the frame rate is not good here. We can go ahead and get this all set up. <laughs> Rip my FPS. Uh, but yes, the same way that I've been doing all of this, if we do Essence uh, and we just search up uh, Terra Essence, we can go ahead and drag that in. And this is a great way, like I use, to be able to take the items and place them into our drawer network, just like that. So at this point, we're going to dive into another part of this mod. This is sort of like, I would say, the in tier. Uh, so once you have Terra Steel, you're able to use this, uh, technically just one, to open a portal to Alfheim. And that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to use these nuggies here uh, to not only make Natura Pylons, which we're going to need too, but we're also going to need to make the glimmering wood that you see right here. And then we need to build the portal. Now the portal isn't too difficult to build. You're going to place your gateway right in the center, and then you're going to use regular logs on the bottom. And then I'm going to use a log here and a log here. And then I'm going to place these glimmering living in the center section. A log here and a log here. Glimmering. And then a log here and a log here. And glimmering. You don't really need anything in the corners technically. But I do like to add these in the corner. And if you really wanted to get fancy. We can go ahead and grab an axe. And we can strip this all away. So we can actually strip these. And make it look a little bit nicer. Now this middle gateway core cannot be stripped, but you can strip the rest of it. And I think that looks kind of nice. Now putting the pylons on here, well, I would recommend filling these up first. Now I have these pointed directly towards this, but another way you could do this is by using a mana tablet. And you notice whenever you have a wand here, you can change this mode. You can change it from fill to receive. And so you would just set these mana pools to send to your tablet and you just drop it in. And then that would transfer the mana and then you would send it over here. But in my case, I have let it fill up enough. So this is about all you need to start this up. So we're going to place our pylons on here like this and in this position. And then we just need to click this with the wand right here. And that will open up our gateway. And there we go. Now, it's not a dimension we can travel through, unfortunately. However, there have been uh, add-on mods that I have played through that did let you go through them. And um, 
it's just a place that we can trade. And kind of the lore is, is that we send the items in for the Alfheim dimension to sort of research, and then they send us uh, advanced versions of those things back, um, which is kind of interesting. So in uh, with that in mind, we can, for example, take like a mana diamond and toss it in and we get ourselves Dragonstone. Uh, and this does cost a little bit of mana each time you do these operations. And we're going to need this to be able to make the structure or the pylons that we're going to need to technically take on the Gaia Guardian. Something else I can recommend once you get this done, definitely send your Lexic Batania over. That way you can be graced with the knowledge in this book that will talk about the thing we're about to do. So now that I have everything I need, I want to fight the Gaia Guardian. And I think this is going to be the best dimension to do it in, which is the All the Mods Mining Dimension. And that's because it is absolutely flat and it is so nice having just a flat area to build this in. Uh, and how do we build that? Well, that's where the Lexica Batania is going to come into play. So if you go under the Alphamancy section and then you go under the Ritual of Gaia, you can just go ahead and place down a visualizer um, and we can go ahead and actually sink this into the ground just like this and then right click and that will give me the visual indication of where this needs to go. And yes, you're going to need to basically build a basic tier beacon. You can make it a full beacon if you want. That's really nice to get some regeneration. If you were doing this without the insane mods that we currently have. And then these pylons, which get placed on top of blocks in all of these four corners here. So just like this. And that is going to complete the structure that is going to allow us to fight the Gaia. Uh, pretty nice. So that is done. And so to actually take on the Gaia, well, let's talk about that. You don't want to use any type of flight. So flight will, uh, will kind of be negated. You can fly within the bubble, but if you fly outside of the bubble, uh, you will get kicked out of the bubble. If you leave the bubble that's about to spawn in, um, it will kick you from the fight. So there's a lot of stuff. If you die, it cancels the fight and you will lose your Terra still. So it does cost a Terra still to start. And yes, we should be able to annihilate this guy pretty quickly. Now, I do want to test some things that is going, since we have like unlimited terror still, I, I want to test some things. I want to try capturing this thing with a Drigme. Um, I don't know if that's 100% possible. It should be possible, um, but it will require some weird things that we're going to have to figure out, like the exact edge border and see if we can't get them to spawn in the border without a mob going in there. All kinds of interesting things that we're going to figure out. Because uh, I don't think you can place things inside of the arena after it is gone. It could cancel the arena. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> That's going to be something worth testing. Uh, but I don't know if a Drigme could even farm it, even if we did get it into a jar. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and fight this thing. So you just shift right click on the beacon. And that is going to summon the Gaia Guardian. And there's going to be some epic music. And with our Morgan, it should be quite easy to take out this guy. Um, so yeah, just a couple of hits. This does have like some insane damage reduction. Vorpal tends to do a good job at uh, pretty much removing that effect. Like, uh, yeah, knocking it down. So we pretty much two phase this. If you had a better Morgan Sword, there is the potential of you being able to one phase it. Uh, but this is going to be the first tier. There is another tier Gaia after this one. This is kind of interesting, this going on. Honestly, I don't hear the music, um, unfortunately. And it might be because, do I have music? Is it underneath the music section? Oh, that's interesting. So I'm not even hearing the uh, the boss music. Typically, you'd be able to hear it even if you had your music turned off. Oh, it's actually kind of, kind of weird not having boss music. So now with that phase done, we can go ahead and take out our guy here. Very nice. So we should have all of the items that we just got from that being Gaia Spirits, which is we get eight of them from that, uh, or we just got super lucky and I think you do get eight of them, uh, but we're going to need to use these to make the next ingot, which is the Gaia Spirit ingot. This is the one that's definitely worth fighting. It's going to be surrounding a Terra still, so you need to consume four of them, but it's way worth it. You'll get runes and everything from taking on the next tier boss. And I'm wondering if this go around, if it's actually going to have some music. That's uh, kind of interesting that I didn't even hear any. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's craft this ingot. And you don't have to modify this in any way. It's just going to work, which is really, really nice. And let's put this to the test. Notice we have four in here. Let's go ahead and we should get, I think 16 or something like that. It's, a, it's significantly more that we get from this Gaia fight. 
Um, like I said, and then we also end up getting a dice of fate from this. So yeah, this one is exactly the same for the most part. Um, so as far as phases go, except for you end up getting hit with these like fairies, uh, it shoots these bolts at you of magic that can hurt quite a bit if you're not prepared for them. Yup, but it looks like, I mean, for the most part, this is pretty much the same. It looks very simple though, because of how powerful our current gear is and how powerful our sword is. And yeah, I, I know, more phases of mobs. This is probably the most boring part of the fight. So after the waves of mobs, we just simply take this guy out, which is, believe it or not, ourself, uh, which is always kind of funny to think about. It definitely is ourself. And we should get 16 Gaia Spirits, like I mentioned. We even get some Mana Steel and some Mana Diamonds, and we get these runes. So we got the Runes of Sloth, Autumn, Summer. These are very nice to get, and we get ourselves the Dice of Fate. And the Dice of Fate, like I said, each time we're going to fight this, which I do want to fight it enough to get each Dice of Fate, we get a different type of uh, Relic. And this one is not as useful. It is kind of cool that we can summon if we had mana, which I don't have any mana in my tablet. This will summon a bunch of weapons that shoot out at the target, which is kind of cool. Um, definitely, all of this is, is definitely anime references. The, just this whole mod is full of anime references. But now that we have that, we can make several different things that are cool, cosmetic and all kinds of stuff. Like we can give ourselves wings, even though we don't need the flight from the flugel, we can still get the wings and stuff from it, which I kind of want to do. Um, but yeah, I noticed that this is like 12 blocks out. So let me get some iron blocks and we will map this out because I want to try. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I want to try and on this block right here, I want to get that ritual going. So the ritual of containment is what I want to test out and we'll get ourselves some jars. So I'm going to place some jars just to make sure that we have enough jars. Actually, I need these jars to be on the outside. So just like this, place some more jars over here, and then we need ourselves a brazier for the ritual, and then we need a source jar. So let's put a couple of source jars back here. Just make sure it has enough. And then we're gonna activate the ritual. Now it's probably gonna pull this thing in. So that's one. Um, let me go ahead and remove this. I'm gonna add some more jars. And I want this to be just right on the edge. Uh, now, I don't think it's going to allow me to farm it in any way, but it's definitely worth a shot. And if anything, it's a nice little thing to have on display. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take our Gaia Spirits and let's try and capture a Gaia 1 or a Gaia 2. So Gaia 2. Let's get this going. Notice it's right here on the edge, but the border should be within range. And what we want to do is try, try and get this to go right over here. I have a feeling that it will work. We just need to get it to teleport over there in some way. <laughs> it may take some time, but the hope is that it will teleport over here, right here on the edge, potentially. It's very close. We may be one block off. We probably could have moved this one more block in. You know what? I was just thinking about this. What if I put the ritual under the ground here? And I think its range is able to work here. Um, so I will do some jars, right? We need some source jars. I do have a couple of extra and let's see if we can't do it here. Okay. Cause it's not going to the edge, but I activated it and it is in there. Oh my goodness. Okay. So yes, it does stop this fighting, but Look what's inside this jar. That's right. We have ourselves the Guardian of Gaia in the containment jar. So after running a quick test here, you can definitely see it is not actually giving us anything other than experience, but it is kind of a nice trophy, I think, to definitely have in the base. That's, that's super cool. Look how jiggly and wiggly he is. I love it. It's actually just my skin, but still, it's actually amazing. Now, thankfully, we don't need a lot of Gaia Spirits. Uh, we're going to need at least 18 to be able to make the bee itself because it's only used for the dragon souls from the looks of it. Um, so Gaia Spirits are used down here and we almost have enough. But I do want to continue fighting this because I do want to get each of the relics. So I'm going to have to fight it. It looks like five more times at least to be able to get all of the Dice of Fates. And thankfully, the you you get a new one each time so you don't have to worry about getting duplicates but you will get duplicates after your first dice of fate uh once you have all of the relics that is 
And just like that, I've now completed even more of them. So now we have all of the dices of fate that we will need in order to get all of the different relics. This is pretty cool. So I'll open this one, open this one, this one. Oh, it's so nice to be able to open all of these at once. There we go. And there we go. So that is technically all of the relics, as you can see. And then we also end up getting a legendary reward. We can get a traitor llama spawner. <laughs> Why would I want a traitor llama? Oh, we got Godforge pearls. I'm, I'm actually kind of happy with that. Um, but yeah, everything else we can go ahead and maybe accept. Ooh, we get some Imperium, some glyphs. Ooh, this is all nice. Another dragon skull. Okay, so that is for completing all of the Batania related tasks. The cool thing is, though, the Ring of Thor and the Ring of Odin is some of my favorite rings. Loki, not so much, even though I absolutely love the show. Um, and then the Flugel is kind of a way to teleport. You can set a location, then right click and teleport. It does cost uh, mana. Um, and same with these, I believe they might cost mana. The fruit is a uh, basically an unlimited food source. So just to, it kind of explaining how a few of these things work. But we should be able to right click this and right click this, and that should give us even more hearts. So yes, now we have purple heart canisters at this point. And we haven't even touched the mod that adds even more hearts. We are looking at a total of max health of 102 hearts. That's uh, that's quite a bit. Now back at the base, as far as sky spirits go, we have 76 of them, and that is more than enough for getting through the all the mod stars and actually getting all of them that we need. So I would call that a very quick introduction into the entirety of all of Batania's progression. So that is ultimately the final boss. And then after that, it's just having enough mana to supply some of the other things that this mod can do, such as duplicate items and uh, also kind of swap items, which is a really nice feature, but is limited to only a certain amount of items. So guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Also comment down below, what's your favorite part of Batania and or what's your favorite relic? That's something I would love to know. Let me know down in the comments below. And guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to, I can spell right, there we go, thanks. It's gonna go out to go, go, foe. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Guys, I thank you so, so very much. And I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.